Hey guys, my name is Pedron, and I'm a professional practice assistant professor in finance. I'm also a CFA charter holder. This is another episode of my crash course in machine learning concepts, Simply Explained. All right, in the first nine parts, we provided all the necessary ingredients to understand what is machine learning and how do machines actually learn the pattern in the data. Basically, we talked about what happens behind the scene. Now, we are almost ready to explore different machine learning models like linear regression, logistic regression, penalized regressions, KNN, SVM, random forest, principal component analysis, and etc. So one last thing we need to investigate is what is feature scaling in machine learning and why do we need to do that? So here you go, part 10, feature scaling in machine learning. So why feature scaling? Feature scaling in machine learning is a critical step during the pre-processing of the data. And we do that even before creating a machine learning model itself because it is essential for machine learning models that calculate the distance between the data. So for the models that for some reason uh, we need to incorporate calculating the distance between observations, we end up scaling the features. So some examples for those models are like, you know, KNN in supervised and uh, K-mean clustering in unsupervised principal component analysis. And later on, we're gonna see that uh, some other models that we ended up using great in this sense, and uh, we will see feature scaling is going to become uh, very, very beneficial when doing that, okay? So in general, feature scaling could uh, help the computer to avoid numerical overflows and speed up the algorithm because computers in general have hard time handling super tiny numbers and uh, from one hand uh, and also gigantic ones on the other hand when it's come to calculating the gradients right and the feature scaling also helps us to reduce the dominance effects of a specific variable so let's let's look at an example here so imagine this is our loss function uh, versus two you know, parameters of the model and we'll see that the gradients of larger parameters dominates the updates right so in this example with different range of each features, and then the, this means a different range for the parameters themselves, the counters uh, may be extremely skinny, which will make the grade in the sense suffer from extremely slow uh, numbers, right? So then what's the solution? We can, uh, by doing scaling or normalizing the parameters, we, we, it is, we can be sure that both parameters in this examples could be updated in equal proportions, right? And as you can see, the path to optimal is going to be a lot smoother when we have, um, uh, when we have scaled the features, right? So in general, remember, uh, if the model is somehow incorporating calculating distance between observations from one hand, and also involves using gradient descents and its family uh, in the optimization process, Generally, feature scaling is going to be helpful. Now, let's see how we can scale the features. Well, the most common scaling practices uh, are namely standardization and normalization. So standardization, which we are we're also familiar with, uh, with the name of z-score, it's basically taking the average out and dividing by the standard deviation of the random variable, right? So this is the way that we're going to make sure that uh, we are standardizing our feature using this formula. And on the other hand, we have normalization. And we, for normalization, we can use uh, either mean max scalar over range 0, 1, or we can do mean max scalar over range minus 1 and 1. Right, the, so and the idea is very simple. For when we are doing min max scalar over zero one range, basically we take the random variable and subtract the minimum and divide it by the range. Right? And then this guarantees that the range is going to be between zero and one. So if you want to change the range from zero one to minus one and one, obviously you can multiply it by two and subtract one from each side, right? So this is going to be the, the formulas we use for normalization. Now let's look at an example. Imagine this is our original data and these are the features, right? So let's say if 
feature number one, this is my x1, this is my x2, and x1 is between, let's say, 10 to 15, and x2 is between 0 and 10. This is a very simple example. In the real world, the, the magnitudes are going to be a lot different, right? So, for example, one variable is, is in percentage, the other one is in million dollars, and etc. right? Now, I'm going to show you two pictures, and um, I want you to think about it, which one is doing the standardization, and which one is doing the normalization. So let's start with the first one. So the one on the left, so what do you think is it? Is it standardization or normalization? So it seems that the range is, you know, it can go from a negative number to positive number. And um, so this one seems to be what? The standardization. So we are taking this observation and using the formula of z-score so this is going to be the new uh, layout of the data, right? So this on the left is going to be our standardization, and on the right, this is going to be our normalization, right? And uh, which one are we using? Min max scalar over zero one or uh, minus one one? Yes, we are using min max scalar between zero one. So everything is going to be squeezed in that uh, uh, area. All right, now let's talk about normalization versus standardization. Well, the choice of using normalization or standardization will be totally depending on your problem and the machine learning algorithm that you're using. However, there are some rule of thumbs that we can use to figure out either you would be better off using standardization or normalization. So the first one is uh, normalization is good to use when the distribution of the data does not follow a normal distribution. Guys, remember that normalization normalization uh, necessarily has nothing to do with normal distribution. It's remember one of the examples was a mean max scalar, right? And if the data does not have normal distribution, maybe normalization is going to be a better fit. And secondly, standardization can be useful in the cases where the data has a normal distribution. However, this is this should not be necessarily the case. We can think of examples that the data is not normally distributed, but standardization is going to be helpful as well as normalization. And unlike normalization, the standardization does not have a bounding range. So this is really important because and even if you have outliers in the data, then those outliers are not going to affect, be affected by standardization. And more importantly, those outliers are not going to squeeze the data uh, where the data is most uh, concentrated, right? Because remember, in the normalization, the mean max scalar, the denominator of the formula is affected by the range. And if you have a bunch of outliers from both ends, then the range is going to be hugely impacted by those outliers. Yes, the standard deviation is also impacted by, by outliers, but the effect is going to be more severe in normalization versus standardization. So whenever you have outliers and you don't want it, uh, you don't want them to be affected by this by the normalizers, by the uh, feature scalar necessarily, uh, you would be better off using a standardization versus normalization. And as I said earlier, uh, it really depends on the problem and the machine learning algorithm that you're working with to decide if you want to do normalization or standardization. Okay, now let's go over some general hints when the scaling the data, right? So the first one is we should be careful when scaling the time series data. Why? Because as you know, when you're working with time series, if there's a structural change in the data, then scaling the time series would be misleading. So let me give you an example. Imagine you're talking about a growth company. At the earliest stage of the life of the company, maybe the fluctuations is, is a lot, but at some point, the company is experiencing an exponential growth, right? So maybe, yeah, you know, we're talking about a successful company. After that exponential growth, and then both the volatility is going to be up and uh, higher, and the, the magnitude is going to be a lot different. So for example, here we are talking about in terms of thousands of dollars, here are just tens of dollars, right? And then if I, when I, when I, when we are trying to scale the, the data here, if you use the entire range, then the effect of these earlier years is going to be very tiny. 
which is kind of it's kind of giving us a misleading uh, representation of the data back then right so if there's a structural change in the data like this then we should be careful maybe we should split the data into uh, separate time series and then to use the a separate uh, transformation to that part of the data. So that's one thing. Another thing is that in order to avoid data leakage, it is a good practice to fit the scalar on the training data and then use it to transform in the test data. So what do we mean by that? Remember, if this is your data set, let's say 80% train and 20% test, you're going to figure out what are the parameters of the scalar using the train set. So for example, if you're using the standardization, let's calculate the average and the standard deviation using the train set. And then when you have the formula, x minus mu divided by sigma, you can apply the, the, this mu and sigma from the train set and transform the test set data using this formula. So it is, again, it is uh, recommended to do, to do it like this because you don't want it um, in, in some extreme cases, you don't want the very big outliers or leverage points in the test data affect your uh, your scalar. Because at the end of the day, remember in machine learning, we want to we want to test the performance of the model in the test set, and you want to make sure that uh, there is no cheating going on. The model has not been trained in something that it has seen before, right? So standardization or scaling the features is also part of that process. So we should be careful about that one. Then remember, scaling does not change the shape of the distribution. So whatever the shape of your distribution is for any kind of random variable, it's going to remain the same. So if it is like this, it's going to remain like this, but only the scale is going to be different, okay? And then finally, scaling is beneficial to most not all, to most machine learning methods. However, remember modern implementations are robust to features lying in different ranges, right? So, so this, this point is somehow hinting to us that maybe there are some disadvantages to scaling the features, right? And more modern packages uh, in Python or R are, the, are being developed in a way that you don't need to do this pre-processing step. You don't need to scale the features. You work with original data from scratch. All right, so with that, let's go over the question of the day and conclude this part. All right, question of the day. So I want you to think about what are the disadvantages of feature scaling, if any, right? So why don't we always close our eyes and use feature scaling by default? So what's the catch, okay? And uh, I want you to think about all those disadvantages and uh, comment them in the comment section below. Until the next episode, stay healthy and take care.